don't pinch work, no Google grabbing. Um, I'll tell you a little story. I think it was my second client it was a catering business in France, and I was working with my best mate in my bedroom, and he gave me some pictures that he'd nicked off Getty Images when he did pictures of families around barbecues, <laughs> and um, he'd cropped the Getty Images off, and I used them on the website, and my client called me up, like, really angry, like, oh, we've got a letter from, from Getty Images, we don't know what to do, they want £2,000, £2,000 for a picture of a barbecue the size of my thumbnail on an internal page, and um, I freaked right out, I didn't know what to do, so I, like, wrote a letter to Getty, Getty Images and I put 10%, I put like 200 quid in, I said, I'm really sorry, I've just graduated, I didn't realise it was so strict, all of that sort of thing, but they still send bailiff letters around to my client to this day, and now they want like 4,000, 5,000 pounds, so I've escaped from France and I don't really talk to them anymore. <laughs> but yeah, don't do it, because um, you'll get busted and fined, basically. Really bad move, and also I don't know if you guys have heard of TinEye. There's something called like a reverse image search engine. So like you can pick a picture, upload it to TinEye, and it will list everywhere on the internet where the picture is used. And Getty Images have actually bought the software off the guy who invented that, and they have the rights to it. And they just have a whole team of like inspectors just doing it 24/7 just finding people who've nicked their images and sending them threats by the post, and it works. They probably make a hell of a lot of money off doing that. Because most businesses, branding agencies, they'll like hire a freelancer and you'll just grab an image because you like it, use it, and it will go through the system. And then they'll get in touch and the company's responsible, and they have to pay it basically, and the fines are really hefty. So stay away from it. Um, Again, I said about Invato. Invato have a thing called PhotoJune.net. Pictures are between one and five dollars each. For five dollars, you get like three thousand pixel wide picture. They've got loads of different stuff, and uh, so you can use that as a background image on anything, and it'll fit nicely. It won't be pixelated. Uh, Getty's really expensive, so I never use them. And you have to um, pay a yearly subscription to use a picture. It's not even you just buy it one off and you can use it in one place. You have to pay them yearly. It's just mad. I don't know how they do it, but there we go. Okay, so assuming you're still at uni, you've got a few clients, you've done a few projects, you've made some logos, Make your PDF, refine it, make it really easy to use, put it on your website, available through a link. Um, make it really minimalist and clean, straight to the point. I'll show you mine in a bit. And I have quite a nice list of about the 10 biggest recruitment firms in London at the moment. And um, I'm not actually going to give them to you guys, because um, I prefer that you send me your portfolios and then I can forward it on, or give you some feedback if it's it's not quite up to scratch yet um, and yeah they will send you out basically you just call them up every week say I'm free here I'm free here I've actually got um, a Google calendar embedded on, on my website so instead of calling me and asking me when I'm free they can just click through from my email footer and see my dates and see if there's any contracts that fit in with that and um, this has kicked off all in about the last three months so I'm really excited at the moment um, I'm making some action script banners for a company called <coughs> NDKW Low, who are like a big international marketing agency in South Kensington. And one of their clients is a French client called Audemars, and they do watches which are 50 grand plus, and they're all like diamond encrusted, and their design team have created these flash banners of like planets and stuff, which are really cool. And um, I'm resizing them for to fit all the different areas that the banners are going to go into. Some of the like vertical, some are horizontal, so I'm like grabbing all the elements, realigning them and stuff. And they're pretty chuffed at the moment. And they've also asked me to write up a overview of the Burger King UK website, which is a pretty exciting job. At the moment, it's getting a bit outdated and it's a little bit too simple and the German <coughs> website Burger King is really good, it's got some really cool JavaScript animation so they asked me how long it was going to take to take the 
data from the German website, pop it on an English server, and update all the slides with the new pictures in English and stuff. And apparently I might be working on that next week, which will pretty much be my most uh, exciting project ever. I'll be put it in my portfolio if it, if it all pays off in the end. So these are the guys, if you want to start earning some good money, these are the guys that will pay it sort of thing. Uh, it's pretty cool stuff. And I'm just really excited to be able to work with some, some big names now. I almost got um, a contract with Disney about a month ago, a four-week contract to build the iPhone version of the website for the launch of some new animation movie that's coming out. Um, they pulled out in the end and they're like, actually, we've got enough developers already. But what I'm trying to say is that these recruiters, um, they, they've been around for like 30 years or whatever, and um, they've got some really big clients, and they deal with all sorts of stuff. You can be a flash animation, you can be a designer, photo retoucher, logo maker, and um, if you do like Final Cut Pro, 3D stuff, they've got jobs for everyone in all those different fields. Um, so it's a pretty cool place to go. Um, when I was working with this company called Williams Murrayham, I was making a coffee and the accounts guy said that they were looking for uh, someone who did really high-end Final Cut and After Effects. <coughs> and um, they got the recruiters to send some guys in for some interviews. And there was a guy who travels around the world, he does uh, professional like After Effects stuff. He'd worked um, in some recent movies, like the new Superman and stuff, doing the visuals for that. And um, yeah, <laughs> he charged 500 pounds an hour for his work. So that worked out some million pounds a year if you're working full time for a creative job. That's pretty good. So yeah. Yeah, I, I got into using the recruiters because I hated doing the whole contract writing, thinking of a, a figure in my head to say to the client how much it's going to cost them. Just really sort of didn't enjoy doing that side of things. So I've now cut that out completely from my business model. Um, the recruiters, they take care of the whole financial side. If the client ever asks me directly, oh, how much is this going to cost, what's your day rate? They've told me, just say, you have to speak to the recruitment company about that. I don't deal with the uh, financial side of things, which is really good for me because it gives me a lot more free time to work on things I enjoy doing, and it's better paid. Um, as I said, you can send me your PDF portfolio and your CV, and um, have a look through it, tell you um, if you need to make any amends and stuff. Um, it might be quite useful if any of you guys are uh, interested in doing that. Um, I love freelancing, I still work in a full-time job, but having a boss breathing down your neck all day long just really did my head in, basically. Um, it was a bit nasty as well, it's like, I can't believe you've been to art school for five years and your designs are so shit. It's <laughs> the kind of stuff I had to deal with on a daily basis, I just hated it. So um, I quit that and now I've um, proved him wrong, because um, I've been working on some big boy brands recently and he's dealing with little clients in Somerset. Um, I send him emails from time to time to remind him about that. <laughs> also, you've got everything at your fingertips at the moment. Um, if you do have an idea about an e-com shop, as I said, you know, 15 quid by the hosting, get a really nice template of theme forest. Pop in your logo, they're already pre-written code, so it's responsive, it adapts to iPad, it adapts to iPhone, it's um, all there. Set up a PayPal account, just put in your PayPal email address, it's all done, add your product, so that's really quick. I mean, I can, if I really wanted to, I could build an econ shop in half a day with some 20 different t-shirts on it, because it's just really easy, you just install it, you go into the WordPress dashboard and there's like products, add new description, title, picture, price, and um, just does it all the rest automatically for you, and it works, you'd be like, oh, that's never going to work, it's a template, but it does, I mean, this guy did the t-shirt website for, some of his t-shirts are just really silly, I can't even really explain them, but it's like, you know, there's ones that say like cocaine instead of Coca-Cola, and stuff like that, which is pretty standard, but everyone's buying them to an extent, so it does work. Um, high quality photography. Invest in a decent camera if you're going to sort of 
I'd take the example of t-shirts, but you know you want to take really nice shots of the t-shirt on a white background, cut them out with a nice drop shadow, really crisp, so that um, people who visit the website can see that you're a professional deal and you know what you're doing. And um, that will um, encourage them to buy your stuff. And yeah, I, I actually learned to code because I wanted to integrate my animation and illustrations into the web, but I didn't really want to become a full-time coder, but now I sort of have. <laughs> the design team just sent me the Photoshop files already done, and I just have to cut them up and uh, put them on websites. But um, I'm trying to steer away from that now and get back into sort of some more creative stuff, which is a lot more fun, I think. And um, paint equally as well, if you're pretty good. Talk about your work, talk to your friends, talk to people you meet, give them business cards, go to meetups, go to networking events. I went to one about six months ago and I met two clients that I still have to this day. One was a personal fitness instructor, one was a career coach. And um, I have taught them how to do newsletter emails with MailChimp, how to use WordPress, how to update their blog and the benefits of updating your blog. Because if your website's constantly changing and evolving and it's got new content, uh, really good titles like 25 ways to create a logo, you know, 10, 10 great inspirational ideas about the hottest website trends, titles like that, really good pictures, really good explanations, um, work people actually visit them, they find them. Um, I've also been looking at, have you seen in the Google listings now, some of the lists have like a, a picture, sort of like a, a portrait of the person, I was looking into that this weekend because I kind of wanted to do that apparently. It boosts your rankings massively because people sort of can put a, um, a face on the name. And, um, you can look at some little tutorials about how to do that, it's quite interesting. Um, outsourcing, as I said, I'm, I'm using this company in India, which is um, quite cool. I was a little bit worried in the beginning because I had to give them all my passwords and my access to <coughs> some of my clients' websites. I was like, oh, what are they going to do with all that? But um, they've paid off in the end. And, really, really good uh, doing some like advanced <coughs> PHP that I don't even know how they do it, but they do it and um, it's profitable as well. Um, Invato, check it out, really good stuff, codes, um, templates, logos, software, it's all on there, it's really cheap. It's really weird, there's um, this thing called the mega, mega menu plugin for WordPress, which is like this massive drop down menu which is sort of really it looks quite professional and um, I was looking at, I bought it for like $15 and I was looking through the tutorials, some video tutorials on how to implement it and I realised that the kid who made it was 14 because just his voice was so young and um, he sold like 6,000 copies of it for $15 each so pretty good stuff but that's super geeky level isn't it really. The amounts I mentioned. Uh, I've got a mate called Noro who was uh, he's from South Korea and he's struggling at the moment because he's finished uni but he wants to build some sort of um, some sort of business up to do with creative stuff and um, someone was telling me about this business model where you get a team of students and creatives together from all different fields and you work through the projects, you get your clients, everyone does their bit and once a month you um, all meet up and we decide who's done the best work, who's worked the hardest and who's going to get what. Um, I thought this was quite a cool concept, concept to mention to you guys. So basically instead of working for a boss, a pyramid where he gets all the money and you just get your salary, it's sort of a more global network where everyone does their share and it's just an idea I had but I thought as you guys are all students and looking to make a bit of money it might be something cool to look into. I actually can't remember what it's called because it was pretty bad. Um, start a blog, write an online journal, talk about those things I said, 25 best ways to do this, what I've learned at uni, studying in London, um, document it, talk about what you're up to. People do read it and they do comment on it. Think like a revolutionary, um, just try and think out of the box and sort of I go home and I have a glass of wine and I reflect on what I've done during the day and I try and think of improvements or how I, I sort of look at it and think what I could do to make it even better, sort of thing. Um, just sort of 
way of thinking around stuff um, instead of just sort of going on to Behance, grabbing a nice template, da da da, it's already all been done, trying to think of like new concepts and new levels, but you guys already know that. Um, email addresses, uh, everyone you meet with your Outlook or whatever it is, you know you can export them, you can import them into MailChimp, you can write up newsletters now really easily, uh, don't bombard people with spam obviously as well to get in our own inboxes, but um, it's quite, quite a nice way to spread the word. Does work. I do it for a few of my clients and they're really, really happy with it. Um, don't get bullied into a full time job. I think I'll write that. You know, it might be more you, it really depends who you are, but full time job, you know, you arrive at nine, you finish at six, it's just very sort of square and easy to understand and you can sort of slack and stuff. So that side of it's quite nice. Whereas when you're freelancing, you have to be more proactive, you have to be on the phone chasing people, calling recruiters. Trying to, trying to get some invoices in so you can pay this month's rent. But what I love about freelancing is you get paid double or more than double what a full-time job gets paid. And you get to take holidays whenever you want. So there's not much of a um, competition there for me. I don't think I'll ever be going back to a full-time one. But um, it depends what kind of character you've got, I suppose. And yeah, if you're struggling, don't moan about it. We've all been there, especially when you, you leave uni. I always thought it was going to be like really easy. Oh, I've got my degree now. I know about action script. I'm going to be fine. But um, I just couldn't believe how competitive it was. I was in France as well, so it's like, right, I'm bilingual in English and French. I've got script. Surely I'll get something. And I went to five or six interviews, and it's just dud. Just impossible, basically. So. If you can't find a full-time job, freelancing is a really good way to sort of still get around and meet some businesses. Offer them a discount price in the beginning so that um, you can get their names on your portfolio and build stuff up. <coughs> the Envato website also sell these um, print mock-ups. They're like made in Photoshop, and it's like you know when you may have seen stationery laid out. Where you've got like the letterheads, the pen, the ruler the envelopes, the business card, and it's a really nice clean shot of the whole lot. And um, you can buy the templates for those for like $4, import it into Photoshop, and there's things called like um, some vector objects. If you double click that layer, and it opens that specific area up in the new window. You can sort of import your logo, save it, and it just creates this really nice picture um, with your logos inside it. I'll show you an example, actually. picture I took, it's a um, mock-up, so you just double click that image, it opens it up as a square, you put your business card in, save it, and it creates these images for you automatically. And they're really good to send clients because they look really professional and you can charge a lot of money. and they have been spent a few days really getting my LinkedIn to scratch and I applied for this job, just sort of clicking around applying for loads of jobs and they actually emailed me back and said they wanted a Skype interview because they were WordPress specialists for their clients and I knew WordPress and they had a lot of work going on so they called me up on Skype, we had a little chat and I started a few, few days later, worked for them for four weeks um, did this website which was originally had no colour and they had their sort of brand guidelines which they created for them which had five electric colours like the purple and the yellow and the pink and I sort of redesigned their website using those colours and uh, integrating them and sort of the logo is a slider that changes and that slides and, all, and the footer has testimonials that are sort of all the colours sort of line up which is quite nice. This is a job I got for a friend who works for a marketing agency. Uh, two weeks to redesign and rebuild their website. 
um, again, had a bit of an issue with this one because they did some Google grabbing and they gave me the pictures and then they realized that those were copyrighted pictures and they're all kicking off saying it's my fault now that uh, she broke them a contract and said I'm not taking any responsibility for the pictures you choose. So yeah, that's uh, that was a tricky area to watch out for. This is Williams Murray Ham where the accounts team told me about the guy they interviewed for 500 quid a day. Um, this was actually my first proper job for a recruitment agency. Um, it's a cool website because the left side is static and the right side scrolls, which is what they wanted. And they do some really cool 3D videos for like Jaffa Cakes and Juice Burst. And this website's going to go live next month. This for Bursa Marstella, so one of their clients had a new app, and this was the um, design team's uh, design in Photoshop that I then coded into a working website. And they did a really nice high quality video on it as well. One of my personal clients um, messing around with Photoshop, it was really the end of the time to do these sort of vintage retro websites, so I spent probably about two days doing the design in Photoshop for them. And it was really nice because the client said to me, oh Archie, uh, I really liked your work and I want you to just go all out and do exactly what you want with the website, so just have fun. So, um, it's a really good project and probably some of my best clients. Uh, this is an ecological resort in Sri Lanka who build these special sort of eco tents that have solar panels on the top. And, um, this is also integrated into WordPress with some um, sort of it's like HTML5 type hover sort of graphs on there, which are quite fun. Um, parallax, Parallax web design, you heard of that? Where like the background moves at different speeds. Uh, this was for the personal trainer client of mine. Um, and again, I bought the theme for like 25 quid, created the pictures, just dragged and dropped them in. It wasn't a very well paid job. Um, but it's a nice site. And this picture at the top here I really liked and I wanted to use it but I found it on Google so I emailed the photographer and he put me in touch with this guy Anthony Cazaro, who's like a bodybuilder. He said yeah you can use it no problem free of charge. So always check the rights and what you're allowed to use and what you're not allowed to use. Um, often some nice guys will give you stuff for free. And these are two jobs I did at Mediatopia for a wholesale BMX company. I was really proud of this website. It was like the first proper nice bit of kit I ever made, and um, that's still going strong. They get plenty of work through it, and that's their other division of their brand. So this is what I send to recruitment agencies, and uh, they seem pretty happy with it, and it's got me some work. As you can see, it's got sort of the main picture, a little ditty on what you did for that company. They said, don't talk about the company itself, but what you did when you worked there, which is really important. Because when a recruiter looks at your portfolio, you won't be interested in who the company is, but they want to know what your skill set is. So as you can see, it only takes like a couple of minutes to flick through that. Yeah, okay. That's what you want to achieve, is um, fast and easy for people to look at. And one last thing I wanted to show you is this. Um, if you are interested in a bit of coding, I would recommend getting JavaScript for dummies, those little yellow books, and learning JavaScript. There's a lot of money in learning that technology. There's like banking, banking companies in the city who are prepared to pay a lot of money for someone to come in and build like some sort of table that pulls in graphs and statistics of the stock market. Complicated stuff, but if you've got a brain to do it, you're going to be on to a winner with that. <coughs> How do I scroll down to the this? Sorry, I'm being a noob. Oh, I've got it, got it, sorry. Photoshop for a client, but I also put in some swimming fish in the background, which you can see very well. Anyway, yeah, there you can 
see it there, it's like a fish, a trout swimming in the background, and that's JavaScript, so it's like you grab a div and you grab the JavaScript that says move this across the screen from minus 300 pixels to plus what is that, like 2300 pixels, move x at this speed, I mean it's quite technical stuff, but um, if you can get your head around it, it's quite fun to have a little play with, and there's lots of work in that department. Thank you, Archie. Are there any questions? Okay. Uh, in terms of JavaScript, you said that like, there's quite a market for it. Um, would you, and like, how competent do you have to be with JavaScript? JavaScript? Um, well, I'd say. You'd have to have a good understanding of HTML and CSS to start off with. Once you've got that base, um, if you can, I'm, I'm very basic. I can just do sort of some basic level animation and stuff like that. But um, yeah, you'd have to, yeah, you'd have to be able to at least get to the level where you can do form validation, which is like where you can write out a form, and if this form field is not filled in, then require this and red writing stuff like that. But if you can get to that extent, so. Sort of, object orientated JavaScript where yeah you can just create forms. Uh, I got someone called me recently and asked if I could make a, it, um, a questionnaire for their employees where they fill in all these different questions and then they go through next next for about six pages of questions and at the end the form calculates a score based on their answers and I can't actually do that and I didn't get the job but if you can do that you're on to a winner. These agencies you talk about the recruitment, um, yeah. what level skill sets do you need to have for them to take you on board and um, farm out jobs to you? You have to be intermediate, high, you know what level that is? Um, absolutely. I think start off you need, which you guys probably have a really good understanding of the Adobe Suite, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, those are the three main ones. Uh, there's a little bit of work for Flash but not much. Um, if you can do Final Cut and After Effects, there's loads of work for that. And so you need to have a decent base on that from, you know, uh, things like InDesign. If you were gonna, there's a lot, quite a lot of work in print, but it's going down. You need to know about bleeds and stuff like that, and finding the right fonts and pixelation, all those sort of things. But on top of that, the real market at the moment is code, HTML, and CSS. If you can grab a Photoshop design, cut out the logo, make the text live, um, insert what's called some CSS media queries, so that when you resize the browser, all the content realigns to ease legibility on iPhone, um, stuff like that's really good. My personal experience is HTML and CSS, I'm sort of intermediate um, on my CV, it says I'm a senior front-end developer, so I know my HTML, my CSS, I know sort of some basic JavaScript animation, and I can integrate stuff into WordPress, so my skill set is like about building business websites, but on a basic level, I mean, I just, I got my first contract and they were like, can you do a bit of PHP? And I was like, yes, can you do JavaScript? I was like, yes, can you do this? Can you do that? And I just said yes to everything. And I managed to get the job. And then on about the third day, they wanted to archive their blogging articles from five years back into specific categories and have previous and next buttons that only work between those categories. And I went outside and I called my wife and I was like, I'm scared, I can't do it. <laughs> and, um, but then I, I went back in that afternoon and I just sort of grabbed the YouTube tutorials and didn't talk to anyone, just really concentrated and I was like, right, I'm going to achieve this. And after about a day of messing around with it, I managed to get the code to work. It was such a relief and they were really pleased. 
also my friend Michael who got me into all of this, he told me there was a guy who writes scripts for movies and there's nothing to do with Final Cut and After Effects, he's not even interested, but he managed to wangle his way into a recruitment agency with hardly any skills and they just fed him some like Final Cut, some 3D stuff, and he was just literally doing the tutorials whilst he was at work, like learning the software and getting paid at the same time. So she can, she can be a bit, a bit of a player. Um, <laughs> you can sort of just wang your, wangle your way in, really, and then sort of go from there. Just be confident in your skill set, that's what it is, I think, even if you're not that good. Because once you're in, you're in, sort of thing. Any more questions? Um, do you prefer building websites on WordPress or just uh, hard code? Um, what I do is I take Photoshop file, and that's what I really enjoy doing now, is cutting it all up, putting it into a grid, aligning it, making it responsive so it realigns, and that's pure HTML and CSS, so that in itself is sort of pure coding, but once I've done that, I then install WordPress on my server, and I sort of put the hooks in so that it all works inside the CMS. But I would never go near making my own CMS system in PHP because it's really advanced, and I prefer to use what's already out there. And the support for WordPress is amazing as well because it's like hundreds of geeks from around the world who are like debating on forums and helping people for free and advising. Um, there's a website called Stack Overflow, which is really good, where they have like can ask a question and techies from around the world will answer it to you just free of charge. Um, so that's that's been an absolute lifesaver at my job because I'm like, can you do this? And I just write the Stack Overflow free of charge and um, I get an answer usually because it's really cool. So yeah, just sort of uh, pure coding and then integrating into WordPress. But there's other systems out there. There's like Joomla, which I haven't tried, which I've heard isn't as good as WordPress. There's Magento, which is like super advanced e-com CMS system, which um, has really good SEO, like it adds tags to everything so that you get found in search engine for really specific queries, but it's really complicated and it's made up of about four or five thousand different files and different subfolders and you have to like find where a specific line of code is an absolute nightmare. So yeah, just static HTML and CSS and then WordPress integrated so the client can update it. And there's some really good tutorials on YouTube as well, just like create a custom theme in WordPress. Um, some really nice sort of two-hour tutorials come out and walk, walk you through the whole process from beginning to end. And that's sort of how I learned to do it. Any more questions? I've got one more, then you yep. can go. Outsourcing, Yeah. right? You like that? It's been a real lifesaver, yeah, because at the moment I'm working Would you suggest that's the way forward uh, for a student just starting out, if they haven't got the prerequisite skills, yeah. would be a way to, to enhance their <coughs> work for their job prospect to outsource the work? Or some of the work there? If it's an advanced coding language like PHP and JavaScript and you have no idea how to do it, you can get in touch with some guys. Uh, I initially found some guys just by doing searches on Google like development company in India and stuff. And um, I got a few few quotes back and a lot of them were a bit too expensive. And then some guys added me from that on Facebook and then I talked directly to them. And some of them were like young kids who were technical minded. And um, yeah, they stuff I can't do now, I just get in touch with them and they say, yeah, it's gonna take two hours, we'll charge you nothing, peanuts. And then I just write up the invoice for the client and um, yeah, that would definitely be a, a good strategy, I reckon. If you don't want to get too in-depth with the coding, you can always outsource it. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Yes, one question is, um, because you say that WordPress is not the only website, um, the, the tools are the same for the quality of the project. What do you think, uh, do you think the design is the key, the difference between the websites or the functionality, or what is the key, the difference between, between WordPress or another? No, between clients, between how, you, how a client can you make a stand up from the browser or this website, or the other days, or the so. 
would you make them stand out using WordPress? The style, what, what is the key to stand out? The WordPress or the tools? Because I think that you said that WordPress is a model of the website. So what is the key? The design or the functionality? Um, I or think the initial sort of element of it is the business that you're working for has to have a product that's interesting or an idea that's great. I mean, if they're just selling sort of bolts and screws, it's going to be really hard to market that and make a website that's appealing to people unless you went all out and you did some really cool animation with bolts and screws, I don't know. But um, there's a, this sort of a global area as well. There's social media engagement, there's blogging, um, you can organize competitions, um, you can set up newsletters for them, uh, you can redesign, redesign everything for them and make it a lot more aesthetically pleasing. Um, there's a whole wide of factors. So it's more important than the design, the website. Well, I'm more of a designer than a developer, I think. So I prefer design, but yeah, it's a good question. I'm not really sure. It depends what the business is. Um, if you're going to have some a website that's sort of, for example, a T-shirt competition website where. You're, you guys are designer students, you create some cool designs, you upload them to this website and then it organizes a competition where people rate how good the designs are and then you get a royalty contract. There's a few websites out there, so it's really sort of using what's out there, building upon it, making it sort of community-based, I suppose, and just making something fun that people are going to enjoy going back to and looking at and using and participating in really just have to think of a unique angle for that business. Um, I saw a picture you had, like that interactive picture that you actually did you did with HTML5. Um, how has that been used? Um, is that a thing? I know it's a new thing, but I'm not quite sure is it, it going to get into, you know, are they asking for HTML5 or is it going to be worth learning? Absolutely. In fact, you can cut out the PHP and JavaScript completely now. If you want to do animation, um, sliders, uh, background images that move, what else is there? there's something called HTML5 Canvas, which is really pretty exciting for the geek world, which is where basically you create a code that writes, a, it's like Illustrator, but it's written in code, so everything's a vector, and you can create animation and define animation within the HTML5 canvas. Uh, really good portfolio of high-end work is a company called Senep, that's S-E-N-N-E-P dot co dot UK, and they won the best web design company in the UK in 2010, and they've got a really interactive portfolio that uses a lot of HTML5, um, just really advanced animation. It's really good, I think, for for um, animating stuff, if you want to do like custom bespoke animation that's almost like flash, but it works across the iPhone and the iPad, HTML5 is really good. So if you put in a balance flash and HTML5, which one choose to learn at the moment? HTML5, yeah, no questions asked. HTML5 for basic animation, or if you want to go more advanced, uh, JavaScript is the one. Um, Flash is obviously becoming a bit redundant now, but it is still being used for banner advertising. That's about all it's used for, I think, nowadays. It's the only thing. Um, what about um, Adobe Edge? Yeah, I haven't actually played with that yet. Have you not? <laughs> <laughs> because it's JavaScript based and it's similar to Flash and it looks like. Um, after Effects, it does all those things, uh, yeah. Make, and things are interactive within yeah. it. Um, I have a feeling that uh, Adobe is basically phasing out Flash and integrating the Flash into Adobe Edge to give you their separate functionality. Um, have you used the, the software? Um, no, I haven't had time to play with it. Um, I was doing a review of Burger King de Germany, and they've used a similar thing, which is software. And I was really shocked. I looked at some screenshots, and it looks exactly like a flash timeline. You like add in keyframes, yeah. and then you create your flash animation, and then it exports it into JavaScript yeah. and paste it into your website. I have to email me. I can't remember off the top of my head. Well, Google has like uh, converted from Flash to JavaScript. 
in HTML5, so wherever flash you go, you can convert it to HTML5 in JavaScript. Is that Adobe Edge again? Uh, no, that's from Google. Okay. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Google do they that? released it like a while ago, like a year ago. I learned something today. Uh, Adobe Flash 6 can also output animation in HTML5. Really? <laughs> Yeah, but it's a plug-in device. Oh, so yeah, plug -in. Any more questions? One last question. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you.